My name is Joe Van Wyck and I am a photographer in Austin, Texas. For more videos like this, please subscribe below. Whether you're a complete camera nerd like me or someone who just appreciates good quality video on YouTube, I'd like to enlist your help in helping me evaluate the viability of the Sony a7R II camera as a vlogging camera. Since I started doing photography and video professionally, the Sony a7R II has been a really great camera for me. I've collected some really serious glass for it that I'm very pleased with. I just did a photo shoot yesterday and it just turned out so great. So the question today is the, about the viability of this camera as a vlogging platform, as doing uh, YouTube videos and in particular in the selfie mode. And the camera has so many elements that make it ideal. It's, uh, you can put really uh, small compact lenses on it like this right here. This is the Sony 28 uh, millimeter F2 lens. And this on the end of it can be fitted this adapter that turns this 28 millimeter lens into a 21 millimeter lens f2.8 and then of course there's the the sony 16 to 35 millimeter f4 lens that also makes a really good uh, focal range for vlogging and in particular selfie video um, it has a microphone input jack even has a headphone jack and I have the uh, Rode Video Micro on it now. So perfect, right? Well, not so perfect. Oh yes, the screen. So the LCD screen does not flip out. It only flips up. And that's the nemesis of the vlogger because really when you're doing video, not only holding selfie video at arm's length, but doing video of shooting yourself across a dining room table, whatever, it's awfully nice to be able to see yourself on the screen. So what I wanted to do today is to test out some shots and in particular test out a feature of this camera that doesn't make up for the fact that it doesn't have um, a forward-facing, um, fully articulating screen but it does offer something that can, oh, let's just say, make up for it to some degree, and that is really fantastic face recognition. Okay, so for our test here, I'm gonna start off with the 28 millimeter F2 lens, and I'm gonna walk a little route and then stop the video, come back and put the 21 millimeter converter on the end of it and walk the same route. Then I'm going to put on the 16 to 35 lens and walk the route one last time and then I think I have a surprise for you after that. So let's go ahead and take a little walk with the 28. We're gonna be going through the house at various, uh, various lighting scenarios and we're really going to put this uh, face recognition feature through a torture test to see how well it grabs on to uh, focus on my face and, and how it does. Remembering this whole time that I'm flying blind completely. I can't see uh, myself. I can't look over at a screen and see if there's a box around my face or anything. So I'm completely trusting in the, the face recognition feature. Thank you for joining me in my office, by the way. So let's go ahead and go on our route down dark hallway. And now this is, uh, this is my portrait studio in our home. Just did a shoot in here yesterday. So the 28 mil lens that I have on right now is really not the ideal focal length for this kind of walk and talk vlogging. So 
got to keep that in mind. The 21 converter that I'm going to put on in just a minute, as well as that 16 to 35, that allows um, a, a lot more room between my face and the camera, uh, kind of giving you a better context of what's going on around and behind me. So that's, that's the good news about those lenses. The killer thing about this lens is the 28 millimeter and the length away from my face as well as it being an f2 lens on a full frame camera the backgrounds if if i'm not mistaken the backgrounds really blurry and blown out and beautiful so now we're going down a darker stairwell it's a good uh good opportunity to see how uh, the sony a7r2's body does stabilization Remember, I'm just hanging on to a gorilla pod. There's no gimbal or stabilizer. Merry Christmas, by the way. We've got, uh, got Santa over here. Now, I've just walked down into a, a considerably darker environment. So I'm gonna take a little trip through the living room, turn around, now I should have, I should be backlit right now, be real curious if it's still hanging on to my face and how the backlighting situation is going. Back through the house, again, checking out image stabilization um, in a kind of a dark hallway. Now we're going out into bright brightness. We finally gotten a little, oh, it's uh, it's still sprinkling a little bit. We've finally gotten some winter weather in Austin, so we're loving that. I figured I'd just walk right down to the end of the sidewalk here and then repeat with the other lenses. So please let me know what you think about this. Again, this is the 28 millimeter, the Sony 28 millimeter F2 lens with no converter on it. Okay, now the 21 millimeter lens. When this converter is put onto the 28 millimeter F2 lens, when it's snapped onto the end of it, it converts it to 21 millimeter, but slows down the aperture to F2.8. But as you can see, it still has a really nice blur on the background. Not as much as the 28 though. So let's take a little walk with this. Nice to have a little breathing room. How did it do down that darker hallway? And again, here in the studio. Much nicer to not have the that 28 millimeter right in my face. You know, I, um, I know I look just like Brad Pitt and all, but uh, still it's kind of the, I don't, I don't like the 28 millimeter length um, being so close when doing selfie vlogging like this, which of course, as most of you know, 28 millimeter is pretty much what the iPhone is too. So similar scenario there. So down the stairway, I'll even pause right here to say that this 21 um, mil, maybe the, the the jerkiness is not so pronounced with the 21 as the 28 when I'm walking downstairs. And back over here, the kitchen view, is it still locked on my face? I'll say it again that it's the, the light level is much lower down here. I didn't turn on a bunch of overhead lights just to see um, if it would, uh, if it would affect it and through the living room back into our backlight situation a lot wider this time with 21 millimeters and now back through the living room again getting kind of dark again now let's take it outside The uh, 28 millimeter uh, lens, as well as the 28 with the converter on it, is not weather sealed. Now it's stopped drizzling, so that's 
not a big problem. And again, up top, I have the Rode Video Micro recording this. So I'm real curious of how the audio is right now as I record. So testing audio, testing, testing, pop, 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 testing audio, one, two, three. Down at the end of the block, once again, this was the the Sony 28 millimeter f2 lens with the converter snapped onto the ends then that uh, converts it into 21 millimeter f2.8 lens and now we have 16 millimeters extremely wide this is the Sony 16 to 35 f4 lens held arm's length still but as you can see you can see this tremendous wide area by the way I wanted to mention something else that photograph over there that I took um, if the camera isn't uh, trying to lock onto that face over there that's a good thing um, because it can be really tricky if you have any photographs or paintings of faces around like here's a photograph that I took of my wife and I wonder if it's struggling between my face and hers it shouldn't be because mine's in the foreground but that can also be a problem and I would imagine even more pronounced problem because this thing is so wide there's just so many other things that it could grab onto but here we go down the dark hallway into the studio now you can really get a uh, idea of the studio and this space this this focal length at least on the wide end the 16 millimeters obviously is used a lot for real estate photography because it makes rooms look really huge getting some backlighting situation now some cross lighting situation with these windows down the stairway once again, this is the Sony 16 to 35 f4 lens on my Sony a7R2 camera. I took a quick peek at that video earlier that I shot with that 28 and the 21 converter, and I saw that it was struggling right around here. Uh, so. I'm curious if the tree is in focus right now or if my face is in focus. But whichever scenario it is, you should be noticing right now that at F, uh, F4, uh, not as wide of an aperture, the background is not nearly as soft and is out of focus and pretty bokeh as with that f2 lens so here we go heading out the doorway my arm feels like it's gonna fall off oh it's a heavy rig it's only a couple pounds but it is heavy oh uh, another little fun fact that um, I looked up before I made this is this 16 to 35 lens is about the same weight as the 28 mil lens with the 28 um, the 21 millimeter converter they're both right at one pound so here we are walking down the sidewalk listening to audio checking out how incredibly wide everything is right now at this 16 millimeter focal length and wrapping out wrapping up our little test with the Sony 16 to 35 f4 lens on the Sony a7r 2 well I told you there might be bonus material so here it is I'm on another camera now um, and I'll let you take a wild guess at what it is do you think it's a, a Leica SL or some other exotic camera no no it's not it is my iphone 7 plus and it's on the uh, dji osmo mobile gimbal so the whole purpose of all of these tests is not to um wow anybody with image quality or amazing cameras or whatever but it's it's really to find the right vlogging camera for me when it comes to something that is 
um, that is front facing. So if I go out on the streets and shoot video um, out the front of the camera and it's not of myself, oh my gosh, that Sony a7R II is a fantastic machine. And it works great and it, it's lacking nothing at all. It's, it's a fantastic camera. But it's when it's flipped around and facing at me and and me being able to uh, having to do that without a um, a fully articulating screen that it gets difficult so i've tested and tried out so many different cameras and i'm just uh, trying to figure out what's best so the question is is this good enough you know what is what's the quality of this right here i know that it's probably noisy in this dark hallway of course it's going to be noisy. Now, it, it will have one thing going for it that's better than the Sony, and that is the um, image stabilization. So I'll show you right now, going down here, going downstairs. It's pretty amazing, um, the image stabilization of this. Um, the, the A7R2 is good. Uh, it's really good for not being a gimbal or anything, but, um, but I think this beats it. Now, uh, the, the house, again, this part of the house is pretty low light right now. So I imagine that it's struggling in terms of noisiness. Um, the iPhone 7 is really good on face recognition. So I would imagine that my face is is in focus now and not the tree in focus in fact it i think i realized what the problem was earlier is i think old santa's face over here it was trying to focus in on that but i'll go about uh, the same route that i did before make that turn now I have the backlighting situation. It doesn't look bad. See, I know that now because I have this huge screen in, in front of me. Notice how well I'm doing looking at the camera and not at the screen. In fact, for, for all of you who want to make videos, look at the difference. Now I'm looking at myself, but now I'm looking at the camera on the phone. And it's hard to do that because there's such a vivid image of you. And then there's, there's the other big question mark about shooting like this, and that is audio. So on this rig right here, no, I don't have external audio. I don't have that Rode video mic uh, attached to it for audio. I'm just using the, the DJI Osmo Mobile gimbal that this iPhone is on. Um, does not allow you to attach external audio. Um, but is that a problem? Like there's a, there's a car getting ready to, to pass by right now. How bad is the noise of, of that car? You know, was that, was that really bad? Is, when I think about audio, no, you can't put external, now there's a plane, a jet um, going overhead now. So how bad is that? So can you hear my voice over that jet? Because it's, it is pretty loud. I've often thought about this in regards to audio. Um, and and the inability of a rig like this to have external audio yeah you're you're pretty much relegated to the the built-in audio of the iPhone but what what should be the best built-in audio out there well a phone should be it so I'm curious about that please leave your comments about all of these different setups and if you think that this right here this this setup here that I'm using and walking and talking with okay so it doesn't have a beautiful bokeh 
in the background and it doesn't have external audio but is it good enough or is it even better because of this gimbal stabilizing things let me know your comments and if you uh, enjoyed this test and please by all means if you'd like to see more videos like this please subscribe Thank you.